Okay, an introduction to using a graphing calculator on the web, a web-based graphing calculator from the website Desmos. Um, so what I'd like you to do first is type in desmos.com in your URL and go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see there's a graphing calculator here and down here, uh, this is some teacher activities. When we do teacher activities, and I'll just show you this, it'll pop up a screen that says enter your class code because you you won't log in at desmos.com. You'll log in at student.desmos.com. And I'll make sure you know the difference between which one I want you to log in with. You'll sign in with both of these things. If you're in as a student or if you're in just working on your own, I would suggest signing in. So I'm just going to say start graphing. And you can see up here it says sign in. Now, if we look over here, you see how it has a bunch of examples. These are user-made examples are from Desmos itself, and that's good. Um, if I sign in, though, um, and you'll notice I have one already, but if I sign in, you'll see that even things that I have done uh, pop in there, and that's kind of what we're looking for. We're looking for the ability to save something. So I'm going to open one that I call tables, and I'm just going to say open graph for a moment here. And then, uh, so what we've done here is we've created an f of x, a g of x, and an h of x, which is a rational function involving the function f of x divided by g of x. Now, some of you are going, okay, show us how to do all this. All right, I'll show you how to do all this. Ready? So let's go ahead and show you how to do one without it. Um, so I'm going to create a new function. So I'm just going to go down on my keyboard, and I'm just going to choose another variable of some sort. I've already went e, f, g, and h. Why not j? J. And then down here on the keyboard, parentheses, X parentheses, and I'm going to say equals. And this time I'll go ahead and type them in. So I'm going to use a, um, I'm going to use a parentheses. And you can notice we, we can do it on the keyboard or down here. I just say X minus two, close parentheses. Actually, let me do X plus two. X plus two on this one. I'll just get this stop sharing out of the way. I'll do X plus two on top. Close the parentheses, and then I'll say divided by, and down here we'll do the parentheses, and we'll say x minus 2, and we'll close them up. So basically this one's just the opposite of this one. This one has x minus 2 in the top, and this one has x plus 2 in the top. So j of x is a little different. Now this screen is pretty much a mess. Things I can do to clear it up, I can get the keyboard up and down, and I can turn things on and off. So let's turn the original two functions off for a moment. And notice all we have left is we have the green one, which is x plus 2 divided by x minus 2, and we have the red one, which is f of x divided by g of x. All right, so um, from here, one of the things you'll have to do in your homework is you'll have to make a table of some values. So I'm just going to turn another one of these off for a moment. I'll turn the red one off. And all we're left with is this one, x plus 2 divided by x minus 2. And so I'd like to make a table of this. If you'll click on the edit list part here, you'll notice that this shows up on all of them. This is duplicate, this is delete, and this, this one here is convert this to a table. So I'm just going to hit convert this to a table. And you'll see they've picked some default images here. Now the point that I'm kind of curious about is right here at 2 because the main thing where this graph gets squirrely is it has what's called a discontinuity at x is equal to 2. So at x is equal to 2, I'd like to know the values right around it. So I'm going to choose 1.9 for mine, and I'm going to choose 1.99 for mine, and I'm going to choose 1.99 for mine. I'm going to choose 2. I'm going to choose 2.0. Oh, I didn't do enough nines up here. 1.999. 2.01. And then put another zero in there. And let's go ahead and do another one, 2.01. And we'll do a last one, 2.1. So this is very much like the exercises we have from 1.2 to take a look at. So it asks you, given a function like this, come up with a table. So I've come up with a table like this. And I'm not real big on writing this stuff out. I see what it is. I understand what the graph looks like. I can show you some other things with this. But uh, what we'll probably do here is I'll figure out a way to turn this in like this. Maybe, maybe I'll just teach you how to do a screenshot or whatever else, and we'll go from there. But here we go. We've got a function. We've taken a look at what its graph looks like. And again, we can make sure these points are on or off. Okay, graph is on or off. There's the points. None of these show up because they're literally off of the graph right now. I can zoom out, see if any of them show up. There's one. See, so there's the 39s when showing up. Obviously, if we had to go crazy, we could get some of the other ones, and you'll see them showing up. The graph just looks like a cross right now. All right, zoom back in over here. If you ever need to pull it around, just grab the screen and pull it around. 
All right, so there's a little introduction to coming up with tables and putting in functions on Desmos. Thank you.